Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So in today's training, I want to share with you three right common price action trading mistakes that almost all new traders make. I'm pretty sure that if you have been trading for less than a year, you would probably be making you know one of these mistakes that I'm about to share with you. But the good news is I will you know give you the solutions right to these mistakes, so in the long run you can you know uh, avoid losses and make more money you know in the grand scheme of things. So let's get started. Mistake number one: you have a ridiculous right take profit level, and when you have you know take profit level which are not realistic what's going to happen is that you will realize that the price moving in your favor right near to your take profit level before it reverses and then hits you for a loss right if that happens to you right then let me explain why that occurs and how you can prevent it so let's say for example someone looks at this chart of netflix right this is a stock right uh, decided to add some stock examples because i want to share with you that price action trading can be applied to the stock markets as well so someone might see oh rainer this is an uptrend right market is bullish it's time to buy so they go long okay so they go long let's say they go long at this price uh 520 level 520 dollars right to make my life easier let's say we go with the green color for the entry price then stop loss, they know got to be below support. Let's say it's at four hundred and fifty dollars, right? Let's go with uh, this pink color. Stop loss at four fifty. Okay. Now what about take profit level? Okay, so they know. Rainer, you know, uh, the the textbook says the guru says that I need to have a minimum of a one to two risk reward ratio. So right now my entry price to my stop loss is seventy dollars. Right, you just take five twenty minus four fifty. It's seventy dollars. So a minimum of a one to two risk reward ratio means I need the target of. $140. So $520, you plus $140, you have a target of about $660. So that's your target, right? $660. Let me just change the target here to $660. And the color, let's go with uh, blue. Okay, so that's your target. There you have it, right? Rainer, look at this amazing trade, right? I risk $70 over here to make a potential profit of hundred and forty dollars this is a one to two risk reward ratio rainer amazing trade this is a good trade now what's gonna happen is that uh okay this is just my wild guess is that market would probably you know hit up higher and then reverse and maybe you might get stopped out of your trade or not but the key thing is that you realize that the market doesn't move up so swiftly to that 660 point that you have you know identified ahead of time it might get there eventually but you know not after a lot of, you know, swinging up and down, a lot of emotional stress and trauma on you. So what's the problem with this take profit level? Well, here's the deal, right? The market doesn't care what your target is. Yes, you can aim for a minimum of a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio, but ask yourself, why not a 1 to 5 risk reward ratio? Why not 1 to 10? Why not have your risk reward ratio target on Jupiter planet itself or Pluto? Or Pluto doesn't exist anymore. But anyway, you get my point, right? Why do you have this type of, you know, uh, constraint right on the market that you must have a minimum of a one to two a one to three one to five what's the reason behind it because here's the deal the market doesn't care about your target it goes where it wants to go and the only thing that you can do as a small tiny trader in the ocean is to identify the price structure right that is being left by the market and use them right as possible targets so for example let me say let's see let me just get rid of all these lines for now okay so if you look at this chart, right, I'm just going to reset this. Ask yourself, where might opposing pressure come in? Where might selling pressure come in, right, to push the price lower? So if you ask me, I would say it's probably at this area of resistance over here. So if you're a price action trader, if you're a swing trader, then this is an area where you want to be paying attention to because the price will come up, find selling pressure, resistance, and then reverse down lower. So if you just want to capture one swing in the market, you cannot have all those fancy, fancy, aggressive targets around 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 1 to 20, 1 to Jupiter risk reward ratio. The market doesn't care. It goes where it wants to go. You, all you ha can do is to observe right, the clues that are left behind by the markets and use those clues right, to set a proper target. So what are some of the clues that is given by this market Netflix? It tells me that around the 560 to 580 area, around the 580, 570 level, tested once, bounce off. Came back close time near 560, bounce off lower. I'm guessing right, it could come back for a third time and might get a, a pullback or a reversal from there lower. So if you are a price action trader, a swing trader, a good conservative target would be at this area of resistance. Now, I don't deny this market is an uptrend. The trend could explode up higher. But here's the deal, right? We are trying to capture a swing down here, not taking a trend following approach, right? So the context here is that if you want to capture a swing, right, your target right, must be of reasonable, reasonable 
level. Okay, so that's the key thing I'm trying to bring across. Another example, right? Let's look at the New Zealand dollar. Same thing, okay? So again, right, a trader might look at this, right? Let me ask you, where do you want to set your target? Is it over here? Here? Or here? So let's call this A. This is B. And this is C. Now take five seconds, right, and ask yourself, where is a reasonable, pla reasonable place to set your target? A, B, or C? One, two, three, four, five, okay? So the answer is, again, for me personally, I would go with somewhere along C. Because again, I know market tested once, had a pullback. Test it twice, a pullback. Might come back for a third time and make a pullback or a reversal. I have no idea. Right? It's not reasonable to set it at A or B because again, right? You know, it's just, you know, wishing for the stars, right? Wishing for for you know God knows what, right? So so have your target at a reasonable level, okay? So this is how you set proper targets and this is how you can avoid right the market, you know, moving in your favor and then reverse all the way back down and hit your stop loss. So yep. Point number two bad stop loss placement okay so uh, by the way if you're enjoying this video smash the thumbs up button and if you're not right then hit the subscribe button okay so moving on bad stop loss placement what happens is that the market stops you out of your trade right before moving back in your favor hmm familiar so let me explain to you what is it and how it works so if you look at this trade aussie canadian okay so many traders would see that oh okay this is an area of support rainer okay the market comes into this area of support and then we have a bullish engulfing pattern price close you know higher uh, for this uh, time period then where would they set their stop loss many traders will say oh rainer the textbook says you know set your stop loss below the low of support so they go long on the next candle open stop loss below this low and they go long next thing you know market heads down lower stop that route for a loss and then reverse up higher hmm hmm hmm, hmm. so what's the solution or rather, let me just give you more example first before we talk about the solution. If you look at this one here, okay, same, something similar. Okay, market comes into this area of resistance. Let me just zoom in the charts. Okay, area of resistance. Okay, then we have a price rejection, a shooting star pattern like this. Traders see, oh, this is bearish, right? Man, right now, time to go short. So it goes, they go short on the next candle open. Aha, look, Rainer. The market is dipping down lower, so they have their stop loss above this highs. Then what happens? Market somehow seems to know, right, where your stop loss is, right? So it spikes up higher, right, triggering your stop on this candle before it closes down lower for the day. Okay, so here's the lesson, right? When you set your stop loss, right, don't set it where everyone else sets it, right? Where does everyone else set it, right? So just ask your friend, ask your neighbor, ask your cat, your dog, and they'll tell you they probably set it below support or above resistance. And when everyone sets their stop loss, right, at a very common level, it there's an incentive, right, for the smart money, right, to, you know, rate those levels. So that's why you have, you know, reversals happening, right, just below the lows of support or above the highs of resistance. So what's the solution? It's not difficult, really. What you want to do is don't set your stop loss just above the highs or below the lows. Give it some buffer. Now, the question is, how much buffer should I give, Reina? So again, use the volatility of the market, right, and then uh, let it, Act as a buffer. So a very simple technique that you can do is just pull out the ATR indicator. That stands for average true range. It measures the volatility of the market. This video won't cover the math behind it, right? If you want, you can Google and learn more. Uh, this is the settings I use, a uh, 20 period SMA, because there's about 20 trading days in a month. I go with 20, just click OK. So once you've done that, what you want to do is to identify the current ATR value. And it's quite simple because it's shown over here on this uh, chart. <laughs> Duh. So it tells you that the current volatility of this uh, crude oil market over the last 20 days is about $1.20. So this tells you that crude oil on average over the last 20 days moves about $1.20 each day. So with that in mind, okay, what you want to do is identify the highs right, of resistance. So in this case, this is the highs right, that's being formed by this shooting star pattern. So let's say to keep things simple, let's say the highs is at $72. So you're going to give it some buffer. How much buffer? Just one ATR will do, right? So you know that one ATR is about $1.20 right now. So you take $72 and you add on by one ATR, which is about $1.20. And your math right, should give you $73.20. Okay, so your stop loss will be around 73.20. If I just throw it over here, 73.20, let's go with uh, stop losses rate, okay? So that's where your stop loss is. So it's not foolproof. It doesn't mean that you will never get stopped out of your trade, but you give your trade more breathing room to breathe. And this, you know, uh, puts the odds in your favor that the market can at least have a chance to move in your favor, right? Rather than, you know, stopping out, 
you out for a loss prematurely before going back in your favor. Okay, so this is what you want to do, right? This is how you set your stop loss. So same for Aussie Canadian, right? Just, just, uh, just go and find out what's the one ATR value. Okay, let me just find that. This one over here. So at this point, what you want to do is find out what is the ATR value. Just find out what's the extreme low at support, which is this level over here. Okay, find out the current ATR value and then just, you know, minus it accordingly. So let's say, for example, uh, let's say this is X, right? Just simple algebra. This is X. And let's say the current ATR value is Y. So X minus Y. And the answer, let's call it Z. So Z is your stop loss. Okay, if this uh, confuses you, then just, you know, skip to the earlier part of the video where I use uh, the real numbers. Okay, so that's the mistake number two, right? No bad stop loss placement. And finally, number three, poor risk to reward, right? You know, risk $3 to make $1, you know, risk $5 to make $1. And you might be wondering, you know, why do people do that, right? Now, that's a good question. I, I, I'm, I'm puzzled myself, right? So let me explain you know, how this works and, and what you should do instead. So if you look at this, right, uh, dollar sing, right? Many traders, they will look at this chart, right? Let me just, uh, ATR, uh, not needed for now. Okay, and you look, oh, market is bearish, right? We should sell in a downtrend. So they go short on next uh, candle open, let's say here. Okay, let's say we go with green is entry. Stop loss, right? Rainer say sets it uh, 1 ATR above the high. So let's say 1 ATR is somewhere here. Okay. And then targets. Rainer say don't set it at the uh, at a ridiculous price point. Set it at a reasonable level. So let's say this is your target. So at this point, you can green is entry. This is your entry. This is your stop loss. This is your target. And if you do the math, right, you will see that your risk to reward is quite bad, actually. This is your risk, and this is your reward. This is your risk, and your reward is to this blue line over here. So you can see that if you were to take this trade, right, you are pretty much risking a dollar to make 17 cents. Okay, not a good trade. So why do people do this? Why do people have, you know, such wide stop loss and small targets? A couple of reasons. Number one. They have the fear of missing out. They see the market, right? Such bearish momentum, right? Bam, 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 right? Every day it's been heading lower. They don't want to miss the move. They quickly chase the market, enter the market. And and then, right, what they have, you know, they, they set stop loss in a way that, you know, to help them avoid getting stopped out, right? So they set, set their stop loss. Maybe they know how to set it. They set it 1 ATR above this highs. And then they are afraid of losing their profits. As the market moves slightly in their favor, okay, they want to quickly book their profits, right, for the fear of, you know, missing or rather for the fear of losing those profits. So this is how you get, you know, wide stop loss and small profit target. Wide stop loss because you fear getting stopped out and small target profit because you fear of losing those profits. And that results in a very poor risk to reward on your trade. Of course, not everybody thinks in this similar manner, but that's largely the reason, right, why traders, they tend to have larger... Uh, larger losses, right, compared to their profits. So what's the solution? Okay, solution is simple, right? Don't chase the market. Let the market come to you. When the market come to you, you realize that your risk to reward, right, the equation, right, will be in your favor. So instead of chasing the market, let's say this time around, you let the market come to you. So again, right, we let's not change the target. Let's not change our stop loss level because we know that those are pretty appropriate levels, right? You know, being uh, having a target which is a uh, uh, before the price structure and having a stop loss right beyond the price structure so the only thing left to do is to get a better entry point right to let the market come to us so at this point right let's say you know this is an area of resistance that we both can agree on so let's say our entry price we let it the market comes to us come to closer to our area of resistance resistance and we go short near the highs maybe there's a a bearish candlestick formation like a shooting star bearish engulfing pattern to kind of confirm our 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 hypothesis and then we enter the trade so now when you measure your risk to reward you will see that things change dramatically bear in mind your stop loss is at the same level your target is at the same level the only thing that's changed is that you let the market come to you thereby you know giving you a more favorable entry price so now your entry and your stop loss right entry is here stop loss is here your target is at the same level if you measure your risk to reward right now you would see that you are risking a dollar to make $2.80. And the only difference that you did is to let the market come to you. Can you see what a big change this is? Well, it's not really much of a change, but it's just by being patient, just by letting the market come to you, you dramatically, right, you know, change the equation, right, of the risk to reward ratio. Instead of having a, a very poor risk to reward ratio, like risking a dollar to make 20 cents or 10 cents, now by being patient, you can risk a dollar to make $2 or more. And 
at the same time, right, having a proper stop loss level and a conservative target level. Make sense? Okay, so so this is how you you know you want to do things, right? Let the market come to you, let it come closer to your area of value. Could be at support, could be a resistance, could be an upward trend line, etc. Right? So that's the third thing, right? Uh, uh, poor risk to reward ratio and oh by the way if you are enjoying you know this this uh, training you want to learn more about price action trading then i actually got this a uh, new book out it's called price action price action trading secrets right you can get it in my website over here price action trading secrets.com this is a physical book over here as you can see okay and we cover basically right the essence of price action trading so you can see a glimpse over here it's a it's a color trading book, right? So we cover, you know, uh, support resistance, candlestick patterns, right? Reversal trading strategies, uh, breakouts, uh, risk management, so you don't blow up another trading account and stuff like that. So if you're interested, right, and to get a physical copy, uh, all you need to do is just cover the shipping and the printing costs and I'll you know, get it to you as soon as possible. And a few bonuses along the way if you want it, right? I will also send you a soft copy for those of you who wants to read it immediately. We, you'll get a digital edition. I'll also send you a position sizing calculator okay so you never blow up another trading account and last one right also send you another special trading webinar that i did some time ago called part-time trading secrets so if you're interested in the, the book uh, price action trading secrets i'll put the link below this video uh, you can get access to it and with that said i wish you good luck and good trading i will talk to you soon